Here's the question. What's the difference in power between a 4.8 liter, a 5.3 liter, a 6.0 liter, and a 6.2 liter? How much power do we get from the extra displacement? In this video, we're gonna compare all the stock displacements. Not all of them. I don't have a seven liter LS7, unfortunately, because that's way beyond my budget. In fact, the LS3 is probably way beyond my budget. But we're gonna take a look at a 4.8 liter, a 5.3 liter, a six liter, and a 6.2 liter, all stock run under the same conditions. And the question is, some of these motors are more powerful. Like I've never been to a wrecking yard and found an LS3 all complete, ready to take out, sitting at the junkyard. It just doesn't happen. At least it doesn't happen for me. Those are specialized motors. They're very expensive. Guys, take them out right away if they are there. Otherwise, they're sold by specialty places that know how much money that they're worth. But the question is, are they worth that extra money? The only way to find out is to compare them and find out how much extra power the extra displacement and combination is actually worth. That's exactly what we did, so check it out. Now it's time to get things started. We're comparing our 4.8 liter to a 5.3 a 6.0, another 6.0, and a 6.2 liter. So if you took a look at the previous video, if you haven't, go take check it out, it's right here. We compared a 4.8 liter to a 454, both from the junkyard. This is that same motor, it's a 4.8 liter. It was run with long tube headers and a Mazir electric water pump, kind of the way that we do it with a Holly XP management system or HP management system. And no accessories, you know, kind of the normal thing, open throttle body and a good tune and run in that manner. The stock 4.8 liter LR4 produced 333 horsepower and 343 foot pounds of torque. You can see we revved it all the way out here to 6,500 RPM because, you know, those short stroke motors just love to rev. So if you're going to the wrecking yard and you are going to pick up an LR4, there are obviously other designations for the 4.8 liter and they are available as well. But if you're going to pick one up, this is kind of what you would expect. It has the stock throttle body, has a, a or even an aftermarket one that's sized the same to fit that early truck manifold. It has a 706 or an 862 head. It has the very small cam. The LR4 and the LM7 5.3 liter cam are the same. It has normally a flat top piston. And in this 4.8 liter, this is what the power curve looks like. So now let's start things off by comparing this to the larger 5.3 liter. And the one that I got was an LM7. There are obviously other versions. The L33 would be the HO version. Has different pistons in it. As a matter of fact, it has the flat top pistons from the um, 4.8 liter. It also comes with a 799 head. Uh, although I've heard they also have two, some of them have 243 heads on them. And I think that the HO version even has a slightly different camshaft. I tested that in my big camshaft comparison. If you haven't taken a look at that video, check it out where I tested all of the factory camshafts. So I think that it has that HO camshaft in it. But here's what happened. Here's the comparison between the 4.8 liter and the 5.3 liter. And as we expect, the bigger displacement, and this is one thing that's really good about more displacement, is it adds a bunch of torque. So this thing produced 355 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 381 or yeah, 381 foot pounds. So as you can see, bigger motor, the 5.3 versus the 4.8, has a lot of lot, lots more torque. And you're thinking, yeah, but I can just put a camshaft in the 4.8. And yes, you can do that. And it would certainly make more power than a 5.3 liter. But if you put the same cam in the 5.3 liter, <laughs> it would make more power still. And nothing that you do to the 4.8 is going to allow it to make the same torque that a 5.3 liter does down at 2,000 and 2,500 RPM. I have never found anything, any change in cam timing that allows me to do that. You'd have to do it in another way. And one of the easy ways is when you're at the wrecking yard, pick a 5.3 liter instead of the 4.8, and then you have a better starting point and a better finishing point. So now let's check out what happens when we uh, compare it to the six liter. Having covered the 4.8 liter and the 5.3 liter, now it's time to step up to the six liter. So this is our comparison of those two. Here's what happened when we stepped up to a six liter, and this was an LQ4, and you can see, as we would expect, and as we saw with the 5.3, going from the 4.8 to the 5.3, going up to the six liter, improved things even more. This was run with the stock LQ4 camshaft, 
with the stock 317 heads, with the stock LQ4 pistons and compression. And again, they all, all three of these share the same truck intake manifold and manual throttle body. They're all run with long tube headers and Mazir electric water pump, all, all in the same condition. So the six liter produced 405 horsepower and the peak torque was up to 439 foot pounds of torque. So it made good torque. And as you can see, Again, and this is more important as we, um, the, the torque production on added displacement is even more important than the added power output is because on the 4.8 and 5.3, they share the same cylinder head. Now, it's, we stepped up to the 3.17 head on the bigger um, 6 liter, but it doesn't flow a great deal more than a 7.06 head. And, and at this power level, the 7.06 head <laughs> would make a lot more power than the 3.17 head does even on that six liter at this power level. So it would be a good upgrade and it would help add torque because it adds a lot of compression and stuff. So that's a good way to go. Here's something to think about. Um, guys like to do the de-stroked motor. So what they'll do is combine the 4.8 liter and the six liter. And the way to do that is to take these six liter pistons off of that rod and crank assembly and put that six liter piston on the 4.8 crank and rod assembly and then put that in the six liter block. So you match the piston to the bore size, but you put the 4.8 crank and the necessary 4.8 rod combined with that. All of the pistons, the 4.8, the 5.3, and the 6.0 all share the same compression height. So if you put that six liter piston on the 4.8 assembly, put it in the six liter block, you have a D-stroke motor and it will be the coolest thing in the world. It just won't make as much power as the standard six liter does. So you guys can go ahead and try that and let me know what happens. Now let's take a look at the other six liter, which is an LY6. So if we take a look at that, this basically is a six liter, but with a much better cylinder head combination. And in this case, I have to say that the six liter LY6 run on this was not run with the variable cam timing and it would do even better. It would be even better down low in my opinion. I don't know how much it would change the peak power output. This LY6 was run with the same camshaft as this LQ4 cam as this LQ4 six liter. It just has better cylinder heads and it has a better intake manifold because the uh, LY6 intake manifold is functionally equivalent to the LS3 intake. It has the good LS3 rec port heads, the big valves and everything. And so it makes a lot more power than the standard LQ4 six liter. The LQ9 with its added compression would probably be between these two skewed more toward the LQ4 than the LY6. Um, as you can see, if had I run the LQ4 at a lower engine speed, it would have made more torque down low than the um, LY6 because the cathedral port head typically makes more low speed power than the rec port head does. So this is an interesting combination. But again, we've stepped up. If you see this, this LQ or this LY6 made 442 or three horsepower and peak torque was up to 467 foot pounds of torque. So that thing did really well. Again, as we're stepping up in displacement, <laughs> we're stepping up in power. We're stepping up both in peak power and peak torque. So now let's check out and see what happened with our final one, which is the 6.2 liter LS3. Our final comparison in demonstrating the effect of displacement is to run the 6.2 liter LS3. But before we do that, I'm going to get rid of a couple of these because we're getting a little busy here. So we, we will get rid of the LQ4, and I'm going to get rid of also the 5.3 liter. So this is a comparison between the 4.8 and the LY6 6 liter, and we, sh we will be able to see a big difference between the next step up, which is the LS3. So here's what happened, and here's the comparison for our LS3. And as you can see, it makes um, both a lot more peak power. This thing, and this was a factory LS3 crate motor um, sold by GM. Again, we ran it with headers in the same configuration as we run here. We run it colder. We run it with the headers. We run it with no accessories, which is why it makes more power than it's rated at. This thing is rated at like 430 horsepower. It makes four, about 495 on our engine dyno, the way that we tested it, optimized with the Holly HP management system. It makes 490 foot-pounds of torque. So it does very well. Both peak power and peak torque are up from all of these, obviously from the 4.8 and from even from the LY6, which is 
shares the same cylinder head. Um, part of the reason here is uh, we know that the 4.8 liter has the mildest factory cam offered by GM. The LY6 had basically the next mildest cam in the um, LQ4, but the LS3 actually is a very good cam, and from a factory standpoint, is a very powerful cam. In fact, the only one that's better are the only two, and they kind of make the same power, are the LS9 and the LS7 cams. Then they both make about the same power when you run them with the same rocker ratio. So this LS3 is a fairly good cam, and that's what allows this thing to pull out and keep making power a little bit higher than these others do. And again, it shows, hey, more displacement each time we stepped up 5360 to the 610 with the LY6 and then the 6.2 liter. And if we had we gone to the 7 liter LS7, this thing would have been even more exaggerated with more power everywhere. And you'll notice that when we stepped up to the, the LY6 and the LS3 with the rec board heads, we didn't get the big gains down low and had I run it all the way down to 2000, I didn't think we were going to be doing this comparison, <laughs> but had we run it down to 2000, we would have saw that the cathedral ports actually do a little better down there than the, um, than the rec port hits do. But this is our comparison with the 4.8 stepping up. And this is why we uh, step up in displacement because <laughs> it makes it a lot easier to make power. So if we were to add a cam to a 4.8, we'd make a bit more power. But if we add a camshaft to that LS3, we're going to be up in the 560 or 570 horsepower range with just a cam and spring swap, which makes making power pretty easy with that greater displacement and lots of head flow. So now let's check out, a lot of guys want to see a comparison between like a 6 liter LS and a big block Chevy because those are two that they might consider you know, exchanging for one another. Let's check it out. Our final comparison in the 4.8 liter versus the world <laughs> actually doesn't involve a 4.8 liter because we did that already in the previous video. This is our Gen 6 454 and people kind of wanted to know what happened. How does it compare to like a 6 liter LS if, we've got, if we got them all from the wrecking yard? So this is a Gen 6 454 and what we normally do is put a dual plane intake on it and like a 750 carburetor and headers and you know we put a HEI or some kind of distributor in it so we can run it that way because it, when it comes from the factory it comes with the EFI distributor and you can't really use that with a carburetor so run with your typical dual plane these things usually make between 370 and 375 horsepower this one was on the low side of that it was 370 peak torque was at 476 foot pounds we've seen them over 480 for good ones this one might have been a little bit tired but here's a comparison between the uh, mildest of our 6 liter test motors, that was an LQ4. And as you can see, the 6 liter makes quite a bit more power, made over 400 compared to 370 or 375 for the big block. But it does it at a higher RPM. It's all the way out here at 53 or 5400 RPM. It did good, it did good on torque. It made 439 foot pounds, not as much as the big block. And you can see there's a big disparity down here, down low, down below 3500. We've got 415 versus 476, so 60 foot-pounds in favor of the big block, and that would probably continue as we went down lower in engine speed. But here's what happened. Here's a comparison. Uh, what, what about the LY6? So let's take a look at the LY6. The LY6 is even better. It's making 467 foot-pounds, so it's creeping up on the same kind of peak torque as the big block. It has a lot more power at uh, 442 or 443 horsepower so you're talking about you know 70 horsepower more than the um than the big block and a little bit less peak torque but again from this range from the 4000 rpm range and lower which probably where you would be spending most of your time and if you had this in a dually or something and you were towing with it that's probably where you'd spend most of your time. So that kind of would be the critical area. And again, it's just displacement. It's bigger than everything else. So our final one to look at is the uh, LS3. And that has the most power. It has more peak power, a lot more peak power, 495 horsepower. So, <laughs> you know, we have 370 versus 495. So, you know, 120 or 125 horsepower more, which is a lot, assuming that you're revving your your tow motor out to 6,000 or 6,500. It's got even more peak torque than the big block does, 491 foot-pounds of torque. And even in, even a really good one is only going to be like 485. So the LS3 has more peak torque. But again, like the others, it just makes it higher at a higher RPM. It's making it peak torque around 4,800 RPM. 
And again, if you look, the crossover there was about 4,000 for the LS3. So everywhere below that, the big block is better. And the other thing to consider with this is an LS3 crate motor is probably 6,500 or $7,000 if you were to buy it complete. Finding one in a wrecking yard is very difficult. They, they would be less money if you were to find one um, used, obviously, like we did with our wrecking yard 455 or 454. But you could get an HEI distributor or a carburetor. Um, you could get an HEI distributor from the wrecking yard when you picked up your big block. And if you bought a dual plane intake, a cheap dual plane intake and like a brawler carburetor, you could be into the big block for $1,500. And obviously now something like an L3 would be a lot more money than that. So it makes a lot more power, but it costs a lot more money. So again, what is it you want? How much do you want to spend? And what's the application for? If you're towing with it and you want the 4,000 below RPM, go with the displacement. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, in our comparison between the 48, 53, 60, and 62, we've proven one thing which we already knew. <laughs> bigger is definitely better. But the question is, the second question, is bigger worth the extra price? An LS3 crate motor is a lot more expensive, obviously, than anything you're going to find in the wrecking yard. If you guys have ever found an LS3 in the wrecking yard, please let me know in the comments. I've never been lucky enough to do that. In fact, of all the times I've been to the wrecking yard, I don't think I've ever even seen a 6 liter there. I see a gaggle of 4.8s and 5.3s, and believe me, I go search every one of them. Just Even if I'm just there walking around, which I do sometimes, I get out, I walk around, you know, cruise through the aisles, look at cool stuff, because I just love wrecking yards. But I check every LS just to make sure that one of them isn't the mythical 6 liter, let alone a 6.2, and I never find that. So is the extra displacement, which we know adds extra power, is it worth the money? I mean, if you're gonna step up from a 4.8 to a 5.3, really you could just put a camshaft in the 4.8, although it's never gonna make as much bottom end torque as the bigger 5.3. Same thing, on a 5.3, if you put a camshaft in, it's gonna make more peak power than the six liter, although again, it will never make as much low speed power. So the question is, do you want all that low speed power? Do you want all your top end power? Those kind of combinations are basically unlimited. Bigger is better. <laughs> Add the camshaft. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Richard Holden. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More and more testing coming up.